Hey everyone, Gabe's Day here. This is the quick guide for Haruk Durumu. And if you're looking for the full guide with a lot more information and details, you can click on the annotation there. So let's go ahead and get started. For your raid composition, I strongly recommend using one tank for this fight. Uh, if you have a paladin in your raid, you can use Hannah Protection to get rid of the serious wound stacks. In our case, we chose to get rid of the stacks every time it got above five. So six stacks or higher, Hannah Protection is used on the paladin, and that stack is dropped. The exception is just going into a disintegration beam phase. You do not need to remove the stacks because they should fall off on their own during the phase, since the tank is not being attacked. Other than that, you want to use two or three healers as usual. I strongly recommend two healers because three is overkill for most of the damage in this fight. The spike healing per second, even during the high damage um, spectrum phases, is not that great. And you can use all your cooldowns during these phases if you need to. So for Heroic, the first addition is Ice Walls. And these always spawn in a shape of an Upsilon or capital Y with the bottom of the Y toward the entrance of the room. So you want to make sure when these spawn that you DPS them down immediately. Use AE damage attacks, so Chain Lightning, Spinning Crane Kick, Blade Storm, all that stuff, uh, because the damage you deal to any given segment will be split among all the segments of that wall. So the more AE damage, the faster they'll die. Once you kill a wall, you can step through it and proceed with the normal phase mechanics that you have to deal with at the time. The second addition is Dark Parasite. This is a debuff cast on a random raid member throughout the fight, and it applies a 30 second dot. This starts at about 100,000 damage every two seconds and goes up to about 400,000 at the end if it's not mitigated. So obviously this is a lot of healing required. Uh, to help with this, you can use damage reduction cooldowns, or you can dispel it with a magic dispel from one of your healers at any time if you desire. Dispelling it will morph the effect of Dark Parasite into Dark Plague, which has the duration uh, that was equal to the remaining time of the Dark Parasite. So if you have 10 seconds left on Parasite and you dispel it, you'll have 10 seconds of Dark Plague. While Dark Plague is active, every three seconds, a wandering eye will spawn and attach itself to a random raid member. These have about 250,000 health, and they do about 50,000 damage every two seconds, plus a little bit of extra damage when they are attacked. However, they should be pretty much ignored. So the best way we found to deal with Dark Parasite is to heal it for about 15 or 20 seconds, and then once it gets really high in damage at around the 20 second mark, just dispel it. This will give us two to three wandering eyes around the room, and then we just ignore those. They will eventually die to cleave damage when we're attacking the wall and otherwise don't really do anything dangerous, so you can ignore them completely. You can also use Grounding Totem from Shamans to usually absorb the Dark Parasite application, which then of course prevents it, and it's quite handy. To handle Light Spectrum, the best thing you can do is to assign one or two players to drop raid markers on the red Fog Beast locations. So there you can see three raid markers are placed really quickly. Uh, I dropped two of them, and our, our Bounce Druid drops the other three so that we don't overlap them. And then you have another macro if you need to, to get rid of them. You can see the actual macro text here on the screen to um, set up a couple of those, and you can figure out the rest. It's just numbered one through five at the end. By dropping these, you can have your uh, red beam player start at one end of the marked locations, immediately show the Crimson Fog there, and then from there, when it, when it dies, rotate to the next closest one, kill that one, and then the final third one to end the phase. The faster you can get through those red fogs during this fight, or this phase rather, the faster the phase will end and the less damage you'll take. In addition to that, on Heroic, there are two amber fogs that will spawn, usually close together. So it's important that your yellow beam target tries to be in the opposite side of the room to where those are spawning. If you're near them and an amber fog appears, your DPS need to immediately switch to it and kill it. If it uh, appears and then leaves the fog because the fog moved along and got out of range of it, you will wipe instantly pretty much. So make sure you're watching and if the yellow amber fog appears, you kill it right away. 
the blue should pretty much be stationary, just not appearing uh, near a blue if possible. But if you do get a blue one to spawn, you can mostly ignore it and um, just stay stationary with the, the blue fog actually active. It's also really important to make sure your raid is kind of in the same quadrant when the second and beyond spectrum phases be begin. This way, when the ice walls appear during those spectrum phases, people will be near enough each other that they can actually help soak up the beams and kill the walls that need to be killed nearby. So make sure everyone's in the same quadrant as you see here, and then you can manage the beams just like normal once you get some of the walls down. For disintegration beam phase, make sure your entire raid is in the same general quadrant, either to the left or to the right of the entrance, so that you're able to attack the ice wall that is right near the entrance as well, and this will be underneath the disintegration beam. Once that ice wall is dead, you can run through to the other side if that's the rotation direction that you need to go, or you can stay on the side you were starting at and just go the other way. And from there, just finish off the ice walls before you have to rotate through them, and this phase is just like normal from that point forward. Finally, you'll want to consider how you're going to manage life drain, because doing so poorly will create a lot of extra healing and therefore damage you have to deal to finish the boss. Uh, the best thing you can do is to make sure people rotate in a proper fashion. We use three players per life drain, so each player will be in the drain for about four to five seconds. This prevents the healing from getting too high, even if that player doesn't have any damage reduction abilities. However, you should note that the healing that Duramu gains is directly proportional to the damage that he deals. So if you have a strong damage reduction cooldown, like a Shadow Priest Dispersion, that can be used just before you get life drain, then you will greatly reduce the damage you take and the boss will basically heal nothing. So anyone that has a damage reduction before they step in life drain should use it. Other than that, just communicate and mumble or vent who is stepping into the drain next and you should be able to rotate every four to five seconds and have three people cover it each time. It's also important that during the uh, light spectrum phase when you get a life drain that whichever beam that's active in those players stop what they're doing and react to the life drain ac accordingly before moving on so if they're in red they have to stop and deal with life drain before they keep going around and killing off more fogs uh, but once you get life drain down the boss should basically stay around stationary health levels while you have life drain active if he starts to gain health that means you're not handling it properly and you might need to use more cooldowns or rotate more players into it. But once he stays stable or even still loses health, then you can rest assured you're doing it properly and you'll get him down pretty quickly. So I think that covers everything for the quick guide for Heroic Dur Durmu. Um, and of course, if you want more details, check out the full guide in the description below. Otherwise, good luck and thanks for watching.